Okay, so it looks like the music did not want to start. We had Lupe Fiasco. Um, that's the song we had chose to play tonight because of all the controversy about him getting kicked off the stage. Um, we also have a special guest speaker coming in tonight, um, Miss Buffy the Body, also known as Miss Caruth, Buffy Caruth. She's a fitness instructor now, so I know a lot of people have been wondering where she's been, you know, what is she up to. So she decided to come to the show, and I'm really happy that she's going to be speaking to us about fitness and staying healthy. We've been talking about that for the past few weeks. I've been getting back into the gym. I signed the kids up for, you know, martial arts and boxing and stuff like that. So I'm always happy to promote a healthier lifestyle, especially when it comes to the black community. So it looks like she might be calling in right now because I see uh, Eric caught on the line. So let me go ahead and see if this is Miss Buffy. So we'll go ahead and let her in. Hello. Hi, Buffy. Hi. Hey, what's up? Thank you so much for calling in to the show. And I'm sorry, we've been, we were having a few technical difficulties, but it looks like we're on the air now. We're good. And how are no you doing problem. tonight? I'm great. How are y'all? Maintain it. <laughs> Right. No, we're doing good. We're doing really, really good. So um, we have some people in the chat room now. So we're just going to get the show started. So I'm just going to ask you a few questions. And then, um, you know, for a lot of people who don't exactly know who you are, what you did, if you want to just go ahead and introduce yourself to our audience. I'm Buffy the Body. Um, most people probably probably know me as the video girl. Um, I started modeling, doing the urban urban modeling back in the latter part of 2004. Um, 2005 is when, you know, I really became on the scene and on the scenes and um, a household name. So, um, and now I'm doing the fitness, um, bodynomics.com. Okay. Right, and that's how I, uh, that's how I ran across Buffy. Um, one of my videos was playing. I was on YouTube, and I happened to see her video come up alongside mine. I was like, oh, my goodness, she's doing fitness videos. And when I watched the first one, I just kind of got hooked. And so I was practicing along with you and listening to a lot of your tips. And, you know, and I'm always happy to see anybody trying to better themselves, trying to better other people, especially being that there's so many myths out here about exercise and fitness, especially regarding the African-American community. Um, and one of the, the biggest myths out there is that black women do not work out. So, Buffy, why do you think this is a myth, and do you believe that myth? Um, for the most part, um, there is truth in it because mm-hmm. um, I think most of it, um, one thing is, of course, our hair. We don't want to mess up our hair. And then just right. the fact that, you know, growing up, I grew up in the South, and it was always like I didn't grow up in a family that went to the gym and exercised and ate right. We ate you know, things that's considered bad for you. Like we grew up we grew up off neck bones and pig feet and cornbread and you know, right. things like that. So, you know, and it was you know, we was told as kids to clean your plates, you know, um, put some mm-hmm. meat on your bones, you know, no one wanted to you know, wanted to be skinny. So that's how I grew up, you know. You know, making sure you clean your plate and eating, you know, whatever to get by, you know. So, yeah, it, it, it's not really, you know, a myth because there are, you know, it, it's been hard trying to get our our women women to work out. So, you know, it's – but I think a lot of us are becoming more health conscious, and I love to see that. And, you know, I like when women email me and tell me I've – inspired them and oh my god you know if you can work out and you're thick i can work out too now so i've inspired a lot of ladies and i'm so 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 happy um because of that right and i definitely understand that and i agree with you and i think um in a way it's a myth but in a way, it's sad, but it's true that a lot of black women yeah, exactly. or women of color do not like to work out. And you said it. You said it. A lot of it comes down to our hair. And I'm natural, yeah. so it, it doesn't really matter for me because I can just, you know, wash my hair or whatever. 
But I do agree, like, sometimes I like to have, like, weeds and sewings and stuff, especially when you don't pay somebody $100 to sew some tracks in your hair and you got a perm, you don't want to sweat it out because you know you have to pay to get it fixed again. So I understand yeah. that, but what I want a lot of our women to realize is that, you know, it don't make no sense to be casket sharp. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They say in the South, casket sharp. You look beautiful, your hair is done, but your heart is a mess. Or you can't breathe exactly. and you can't walk a few steps without being out of breath. And it's not about exactly. being super skinny because we all come in different shapes and sizes, but even just something as simple as just walking, getting exercise. You know, you don't necessarily need to join a gym membership, but a lot of us have a misconstrued the difference between thick and fat. And if you could just exactly. go ahead and address that, because a lot of people love to say, well, I'm thick, I'm thick, and nah, not really. I think um, if you got your midsection, which is the main important part of the body, mm-hmm. you know, anything above the waist is where they, the, you know, researchers and scientists or doctors or physician nurses, that's where they don't want the fat at. So I feel like if you got that midsection together, anything below the body, but, but below the waist, you're doing okay. So a lot of right. these women... There's no way in the world you can say that you're thick if you have a lot of, you know, midsection, if you have a lot of stomach. There's no way in the world you're considered thick. The only way I can consider a female thick if you have your midsection together Mm -hmm. and the lower part is thicker because, you know, they say that um, having, you know, excess um, fat on the hips supposed to help protect from type 2 diabetes, so, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it's good to have... So now, what, what is it that they're saying, Buffy, because I know you're a nutritionist, because I, I've heard other fitness trying to say this, about if you have a stomach, like if you gain weight in your stomach, that's not good health-wise. Could you speak on that? Because of the, um, you know, you have your internal organs up in the abdomen area, so that's why they don't want any of the fat hanging around in that area, because of the organs. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense then So yeah, you definitely broke it down And I agree with you You know, that you can be thick But if your stomach is hanging over If you got a big belly That's that's not thick Because you definitely have to work on that Because a lot of people are saying That a lot of our health issues Especially with high blood pressure Diabetes and things like that Are coming from overeating And, you know, eating the wrong foods And all that goes to your midsection So you definitely got to keep that tight <laughs> Exactly So now I want to ask you, Buffy, what type of um, workout outfits uh, would you recommend for people to wear to the gym from, like, head to toe? Um, I'm not real. um, When it comes to outfits, (laughs) me, this is just me personally. I'm not Mm -hmm. really into, it doesn't have to be name brand. It doesn't have to be beautiful. Where I go to work out at, Um, You know, I stopped going to go gym because I couldn't dress the way I wanted to dress. I like dressing with something very loose-fitting, very comfortable, and something that holds my breasts together. If I have on Mm -hmm. something like that, I am good. But, you know, sometimes you're more inclined to try to dress up a little bit if you're in a bigger gym, you know, you got a lot of guys in there, and it's, you know, people coming in and out, so... You tend to want to, you know, make sure you look sort of, you know, presentable when you're in a bigger gym versus me. I'm in a much, much smaller gym now, and I work out at home. So, girl, I don't care how I look, to be honest with you. I don't care right. at all. I'll put on something. As long as I'm comfortable, I'm good. Yeah, right, so you see a lot of people, they'll spend a lot of money. They'll spend more money and time, you know, on outfits for the gym, and it's like, you're just going to work out. You got girls coming in with lashes and makeup on, no, and it's I like. See girls in the gym with makeup. <laughs> Who in the world? Now for my videos on YouTube, yeah, you know, uh, I might have on a, a little makeup. I might have my hair a little together, but that is not how I normally work out when I'm at the gym. I don't wear no makeup. Girl, if I right. got on some type of weed that I can take out, like a, uh, I don't know whether you're familiar with um, U part wigs and all of this, you know, the things that girls are doing on YouTube now, making their own wigs. If it's something that I can take off, girl, that thing's mm-hmm. coming off. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't need oh, all yeah. that hair. 
I don't need I don't need nothing in my way. Right. And that's usually what I do too when I go to the gym. I'll either have like a scarf on just to pull my afro back or pull it back mm-hmm. in a ponytail. But I mean you're right, you know, for me I feel like dressing more comfortably. Um, I like wearing leggings. I wear that a lot to the gym. Now let me ask you because you are top heavy and I'm top heavy too and I'm like hundred and thirty five pounds and I'm top heavy. Now, sometimes I find when I do certain exercises that it kind of hurts. Do you recommend like a specific type of sports bra or some people say wear two bras, wear your regular bra and a sports bra just so you don't have as much, you know, where you're falling over? Yeah, I just wear a regular sports bra. Bra, like it's, I think the one I wear most, I think I got it for, where did I get that from? Forever 21. So it wasn't even expensive or anything. So, yeah, I don't. Like, I don't know. I don't have a really expensive one. The main ones I like to wear when I'm working out is the one, like two of them, a blue one and a black one I got from Forever 21, maybe like a couple of years ago. Okay, so it's not like a specific brand or anything like nope. that that it helped mm-hmm. more. No. Okay, cool, cool. So, Ronnie, you said you have a question to ask Buffy? Uh, yeah. Uh, hey, how you doing, Buffy? Hey, I'm great. Uh, it's like a real important question, and it's like um, it, aside from, you know, diet, which is important, How what would you encourage people to do uh, to not just make significant changes, but, I mean, it's like usually the roughest part is the start because most people automatically either want instant results or they have uh, unrealistic expectations. So uh, as an expert in the field, more than most people uh, – what would you suggest like they do, yeah, given that they had different body types too? So do you mean like um, cardio or like strength training or like just everything, is that like what you're start. asking me? Well, I mean, just everything from the start. I mean, usually some people like make New Year's resolutions how, you know, I'm going to look this way and start off, and then they start trailing off. Um, so so you like, like, first of all, you got to have goals. you got yeah. right. you got to set goals. Goals is like the first thing. You got to know what you want because you got to know. If you don't know what you want, how do you know what to train for? I just put a video up about this today. I just, I mean, today is the day I put that video up because a lot of women (laughs) was asking me about, you know, starting a workout regimen. How do I start this? And I said the first thing, you got to have goals and, of course, realistic goals because, if you don't know, when you walk in a gym or if you say, okay, I'm going to start working out, if you don't know what your goals are or what results you're trying to get from exercising, then um, mm-hmm. <laughs> you have to have those goals. You have to have those put in place before you even start a, work, a workout regimen. So basically it's like anything else in life. Like if you want exactly. to pass a test, exactly. if you want to, you know, Whatever you want to do in life, you do have to set goals, and that's the same for exercising. Yeah, the more prepared you are, the better results, better results, basically. Okay, that makes a lot of sense because you do. You have a lot of people, it's the New Year's, and they have all these dreams in their head like, oh, it's the New Year's, I'm about to look like this person, my abs are going to look like this, and they get into it for like the first week, and then it's like I'm tired, i got other stuff to do, and then they fall off. So what yeah, do you I didn't suggest know people should goal. do as far as oh my girl, right, right. You, you only have to do it for a week. <laughs> And that's the thing. We live in a microwave society, so people want it, and you know, people want results instantly. They don't want to work hard for it, and that's not how it works. You know, you can't just work out for a week and then think you're about to have six pack abs. You have to keep at it. So, what do you say, Buffy? As far as like people, what do you think people should do as far as motivating themselves, or what can they do to motivate themselves to hit the gym more? Motivation. As far as motivation, my motivation comes from not wanting to be sick. When I grew up, I remember my grandmother having like eight, nine pill bottles sitting on top of her television. And I always Mm. told myself, I don't never, ever want to have to be dependent on a lot of different pills and a lot of medicine. So that's my motivation. So Mm. I look at it like this. People have to find what motivates them and go for it, you know, because I can't tell you, you know, that's my motivation, and also right. to just continue to look good, 
that's my motivation. My motivation may not be the same as the next person. So when people are like, oh, I'm so unmotivated, how can I get motivated? you got to find something that will make you want to get up and get inside that jam. And it, it that may not happen sense. right now. It may not happen next month. It may not happen six weeks from now. But when it hits you, that will motivate you to get up. So, um, right, you're saying, right. so you're saying like um, it would help to have like some of a workout journal or affirmation to yourself to go along the way? Yeah, that helps because I've been working out for a while now, and I still have, you know, journals. When I work out, I still write down what I do. and You know, I keep a log of what I do because, you know, sometimes you work out and then you go back um, a couple of days later and you forget, like, how many reps did I do of this or how many – like, what was the poundage I lift last time? So, yeah, even with me being somewhat experienced with my workouts, I still keep logs. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So let me ask you, how important are measurements? Because sometimes I, I was watching your video, how you were measuring yourself, because I think before mm-hmm. I was kind of messing up, because I kind of mm-hmm. get, like, my hips and my butt area confused because you kind of think it's mm-hmm. all in one. So I love the fact that you put that video up there. How important is it to measure yourself before you start a workout so that way you can see, you know, where you started, where you finished? Yeah, because that's what I go by mo- mainly. Like I carry a tape measure in my gym bag. Um, I don't, okay. I'm not really big on the scale. I do have a scale in both of my, well, all of my bathrooms. But, um, <laughs> and I do stand on them. I do, you know, stand on them. That's just, habit to get on to jump up on the scale when you get out of the shower or whatever. But um to me the tape measure tells a lot more. It, it's just so much better. Because you know whether your okay. butt has gotten bigger or your thighs has gotten smaller or if your biceps if a guy is working out his biceps to you know keep his biceps measured because you don't really know what's getting bigger or smaller when you're just standing on the scale. Right. That makes sense. I never thought about that because sometimes as women, we go off of that scale and we get so disappointed. Like, okay, I've been working out for a week straight. I've been watching what I eat, but I've only lost a pound. But you're not realizing that you're losing, you know, the fat around your stomach or your arms are getting thinner. So that makes a lot of sense to carry a measuring tape. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm uh, definitely going to start doing that. <laughs> uh, now, here's a question, Buffy. It's like um, it usually helps people when you share a testimony with them. So, like, when you first started in this path, um, how did you feel how that worked out from that point on? Like, what kept you going? When I, like, come out, like, from day when one, I just started work- Yeah, from day one when you was like, this is the route you was going to go, like, what was going through your mind and what what did you do to, like, get to this point right now? Well, my journey started over 15, <laughs> 15 16, <laughs> 17 years ago because I struggled with being skinny. Like, I've never had a overweight issue, I always had an underweight issue. Like, it's sort of, the underweight thing sort of runs in my family. So, it mm-hmm. was like, there's no way in the world I'm going to live the rest of my life being skinny. There's no way in the world. So, like I said, mine started 17, 18 years ago, and that's, like, it's been a mission of mine up until right now, because I still sometimes lose appetite and don't eat as much and sometimes I eat too much, but then it sometimes I don't. So I still sometimes struggle with making sure I have enough calories in. And now that I work out, I have to have even more calories to keep my shape together, you know, to keep my body together. So mm-hmm. weight and trying to eat and then trying to eat healthy has been my major struggle. The exercise part is not as hard for me. The eating right. And eating enough, I think, is my main, if I had to say one main struggle I have with exercise, and that would be my diet. Mm. Uh, that, that makes what, sense. Uh, that's what a lot of us have been told. It's like you can work out, work out all you want, but you have to pay attention to your, like, your body type and especially your diet because mm-hmm. there's many people who uh, they, they hit hard at the gym, but then they're doing like donut curls or, you know, eating excess of food and wonder why it's not happening. Yeah, it has. I'm I'm not I would never consider myself an expert because even though 
I'm certified to um I I became certified back in June through the mm-hmm. National Academy Congrats. of Sports Medicine. So I am certified, but I don't really practice in the personal training field. Like when I got my certificate, well, I knew before I got my certification that I didn't want to be a personal trainer. So I don't practice in that field at all. I consider myself more of a, a person that brings the information, puts the information out there, more like a more like a, a promoter of fitness and health. And I make sure the information get out there and tell women how, you know, to do this. But the personal one-on-one thing, I've never, you know, wanted to do that. So there's still a lot of things. That's why I don't consider myself an expert. There's still, still mm-hmm. a lot of things that I don't even know, like far as nutrition, there's a lot of things I'm still learning. So sometimes I even learn things from other females, like on my Facebook page. I learn a lot of things from other females, you know, things that I may not be real versed in, somebody else may be. So, yeah, I'm still learning. I have a lot to learn, so I will never, ever say that I'm an expert because I'm not. Well, that's good to know because I know when I went to the gym the other day, they were doing a package where you could get a personal trainer with you. And I'm just really trying to get back down, like, you know, losing between 8 to 10 pounds. So they had this package, and basically they have a personal trainer, help you with nutrition and working out and everything. It was going to cost anywhere from 8 to $1,000, you know. And I was just like, I'm not paying for that. I just want to motivate myself and do what I need to do. So I definitely agree with you that people can do things. You don't necessarily need a personal trainer, but I'm glad that you are out there online motivating people because even though somebody may not be able to afford a personal trainer, they can come to your channel and see all the things you do, and that's enough to motivate somebody. Because I say all you have to do is just get started. Just Getting started is the hardest part. And with me, a lot of things I learned from trial and error as far as the working out. I learned what worked for my body, what doesn't work for my body. You know, I put exercises on YouTube, but some women, you know, they'll ask me, well, I did this and I don't see any results. Well, that exercise may not be for you. Try another one. You know, every exercise right. is not for everyone. Like squat may give this girl over here better results than it gives this girl over here. Right. You know, um, um, lunges may be better for you. You may get better results from another type of um, glute exercise than just squats. Squats is not the only exercise that, you know, works the thighs and the glutes or whatever. So, and, you know, and people like to compare their results to the next person result. Oh, God, that kills me. You're not that right, person. Everybody's this you don't have that right. person genetic. You don't have that person background history. Right. That person muscles. Like, you don't have nothing that person has. So you really can't compare yourself to the next person. No two people is going to get the same result from the same exercise, never. And you're right. That's one of the cardinal sins out there because most people will probably approach you, and you've probably seen this time and time again, where I want to be just like you. You can't. You know, it, it's yeah. I have genetics, I have different things going on, just as you do. So what mm-hmm. works for me won't work for you. Yeah, because uh, can you get a bigger butt with exercise? Of course you can. Your butt yeah. is a muscle, one of the biggest muscles on your body. Can, right. Will your right. butt get my size? I can never tell someone that. I can't tell you what size it going, is going to become from exercises, but I know it's a muscle just like anybody else has muscle, glute muscles, and, yes, it can be changed. It can be manipulated. It can be made to grow. You just have to have, like I said, the right the goals and the right um, regimen. It, it, exercise works for everybody. There's not a such, such thing as I did this or I did this and it didn't work for me. No, exercise works for everyone. Right, right. So now let me ask you, Buffy, how I know we've been taught my nutrition and how important it is to eat right and things like that. How do you feel about the whole organic versus like store bought foods? Because I'm a vegetarian. So a lot of the things, you know, I eat a lot of people feel like just because you're a vegetarian you have to buy everything organic. And to me some of the organic prices are just ridiculous. Like I understand I GMOs I and, and just, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, so what do you guys say about organic? <laughs> <laughs> With organic, um, they are much more expensive. 
some people people are not as um, organic is not as available to some people like it is other people. Like me, I live in a small area or area mm-hmm. versus like when I'm in bigger cities like Charlotte or Chicago or New York is more plentiful. I can get to it much easier versus being in South Carolina. It's just not as plentiful as being in a bigger city. That's one thing. The second thing is if you're used to eating junk food and if you go to vegetables that's not organic, you're still making a leap to a better, you know, direction. Even if your vegetables are not organic, if you're used to eating a lot of BS and if you can't go from there to organic but you can go from there to vegetables that's not organic, then I I tell people you've made a big step. Don't try to jump, you know, start from not walking at all to running. you got to start really small and work your way little by little. Even like, you know, with me, I don't eat everything organic. Like, I rarely, I rarely eat organic. I'm just like, where I'm at now is much better better than it was (laughs) A couple of years ago, so I've made changes, but I'm still not on the big, I'm not a big organic person. You know what, and I've always thought personally, like, because at first when I first became a vegetarian, I was on there like, oh my gosh, I got to get everything organic, and then, you know, once you compare the prices, and it's like, this is kind of ridiculous how much they're charging. Y'all want us to be healthy, y'all saying this is healthy, but then y'all charging twice as much as the regular product. So these organic bananas cost, you know, three dollars a pound, whereas the regular ones cost a dollar fifty. So you okay. know, it, it kind of makes you think, like, okay, is this really organic? Are you guys really trying to help us, or is it a scam? Because some people exactly. say that the whole organic thing is kind of a scam as well, you know, because who's to say that it's really organic? It's just a sticker. When you exactly. think about it, you really. Oh my God, that's one thing I'm just so adamant about. With all of this stuff, people trying to change this, change that. And you really never know the truth, and that's what sort of bugs me out sometimes because one minute they saying canola oil is cool. Next minute they saying that it's one of the worst oils you can. I'm like, oh, right. right. I was just saying that canola was cool. So yeah. it's like science just seems like it's changed. Like when we grew up, milk, drink your milk, drink your milk, 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 milk. Now they saying right. milk is one of the worst things you can drink. I'm like, are y'all yeah. kidding me? Right. It's <laughs> one thing, it's another. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, you might as well say all the foods are killing us. Exactly. You know, it, it, it's crazy. <laughs> exactly. Well, that is a bad it's like thing. On top like, of that, the, you know, on top of that, like the, the meats and stuff and like the GMOs and the things that they're pumping into the meats, how do you feel about that? Because like I was saying in that email, you have a lot of young girls out here who are between the ages of 8 and 11, and they literally look like they're 13 to 15 years old. You know, you got little girls who are developing breasts a lot earlier, hips, butts, you know. So do you think a lot of that is coming from the foods and the and the things that they're putting into the meats? What do you think about the hormones and things like that? Yeah, they say that's where it's coming from. I'm not sure myself, but that's what they say. All of this genetically modified um, food, is that's where it's coming from. So I'm like, wow. Yeah, I, I don't know much about that type of stuff, but, yeah, I, I've read a lot about it, and, yeah, that's what they say. So. Well, they do put a lot uh, of steroids in You never really know meat. these days. Yeah, they do put right. a lot of steroids in meat. Um, a lot of things, I guess, mass production, they'll do some shortcuts, and it does affect uh, us as people and animals. So you figure, like, back in the day, 13-year-olds look like 13-year-olds. Now 13-year-olds look like 21-year-olds. So. Exactly. They don't change so much these days. You you just don't know what to believe. You really don't. Like I tell people, I'm like, you have to read, do your own research, and then come up with what you think is best for you. That That's that's what I live by. You know, I don't easily jump on the bandwagon when people start saying, oh, this is so bad, now you can't do this, or this is so good, everyone needs to be doing this. No, I'm not easily convinced. So I do my own research, and then I do what I feel like I need to do for myself. That's, well, that's how I definitely live. agree. Yeah, you did hit the nail on the head. I got to run. Like <laughs> yeah. I got to run. Right. Oh, no, I definitely appreciate you coming by. You answered a lot of questions. So thank you so much. And then I'll have this edited, and I'll have this up on YouTube for you to share with your audience as well. So I'm glad you came through and you let us know, you know, everything that you're doing with fitness. 
and where can everybody find you at on YouTube and on the website? Um, my website is bodynomics.com. My Instagram is bodynomics. My Facebook is bodynomics. The only thing that's not bodynomics is my YouTube, and that's bootynomics. <laughs> I hate saying that word. <laughs> I hate saying that word, but it's bootynomics because my site used to be called bootynomics back in the day, but I changed it to bodynomics because I hate saying that word now. So. YouTube didn't allow me to change my username to Bodynomics, nope. like, you know. So I'm stuck with Bootynomics on YouTube until I can change it. <laughs> well, Buff, Buffy, well, you, not you a problem. Actually, well, you can actually flip that, but, you know, it takes time. You know, I don't even flip it. <laughs> so you guys make sure to check out Buffy, and thank you so much, Buffy, for coming through. You were just a delight, very down to earth, and I really, really appreciate you coming on my show. And thank you for having me. All right, you have a good night, okay? All right, y'all too. Good night. All right, Bye. Well, all right. <laughs> oh, yeah, she was so sweet. I had a really good time having her come on. And I'm still having issues in this studio. Hold on, let me hit refresh on the, in the studio here real quick. But um, I'm really glad she got a chance to come on. If you guys haven't seen her videos, um, they're amazing. She's really good at what she does. She's very honest you know, down to earth, and that's why I reached out to her. You know, anytime I can see somebody doing something positive, especially trying to, you know, help better us as a community, when it comes to health and fitness, I'm all for it. So I'm definitely glad she came through and she, you know, did some knowledge about fitness and working out. She definitely dropped a lot of jewels here. So, you know, as far as everything goes, um, what do you think so far as far as, like, you know, health and fitness and in the black community, Ronan, like, you just feel like we need to start working out more, you know, getting out, stop making excuses, because like she said, there's definitely a big difference between sick and fat. I, I think um, we are the slaves of public opinion, and actually um, we we do, we're very selective of what we do research on. Usually if we have a bunch of foolishness, we do the most research on that, but when it comes to uh, self-improvement, and forward thinking, a lot of times we get very lazy and stagnant on that. Um, as far as the thing with hair and wearing makeup, um, you can't go to the gym trying to look cute. You got to go and handle business just like you do on the job because it is work. You got to put that work in. Uh, looking like the Joker from Batman uh, is it, not part. Of, it's not the business. So it goes from you know your work attire. It goes about your work ethic, your research, everything. It is not is not for the weak at heart or constitution. So while you have, I mean, if you're able to cultivate excuses like right at the drop of a dime, you can put that same energy into sculpting your body because um, believe me, once you start doing it, which is what I'm doing right now, you're doing, um, you start to see the results and it starts building your confidence. You know, and people notice a change in you as far as like your, uh, your appearance, how you feel, how you respond to people. It's, it's like a, it, it helps a great deal, especially when you start seeing results. And right, and it does. You know, even for these past two weeks that I've been going to the gym, I've been going like five days a week now, you know, anywhere from an hour to two hours, and it's made a big difference. And like I said, it's really helped my back. My back feels a lot better, you know, feeling yeah. the energy and things like that. So I, I really enjoy it. And, you know, and it's not to, to knock our people or make it look like, you know, all black people are obese and unhealthy because there's a lot of black folks out here who work out and who are on their bodies and, you know, stay on top of their fitness. But we just need to have more. Because there's a lot of things out here that are affecting us, a lot of things that are being put in the food. So we definitely need to get out and work out. And also realize that everybody's body type is different. Everybody's body right. shape is different. So you can't compare your body to Buffy. You can't say, okay, if I do these squats, my butt's going to look just like hers. Like she said, at the end of the day, you have to know what your body type is. If I do squats, I doubt my butt will ever be as big as hers. <laughs> I wish it could be, but I know it's not, but I can definitely, you know, get it to be a little bit rounder and a little bit, you know, nicer. But you still have to be appreciative of the body that you have and the body that you were born with and just find ways to keep it healthy and keep it up. 
So I'm really happy that she came to the show, and I'm glad everybody's in the chat room seemed to enjoy the interview, and um, people were talking a lot of really good things and talking about their weight and how they're trying to diet and stuff like that. So motivation is definitely the key, Thomas. I definitely agree with you. Danica is asking me to make a video about fitness. Mm -hmm. We'll well, see. Well, that's what I want to ask you. Uh, well, that's what I want to say to you and to everybody else. Just like when you see Buffy, it's like um, using her for example. It, it, it actually solidifies that thing. It's not how you start; it's how you finish. And right. you know how people first perceive you and everything. They talk about first impressions matter. Yeah, that's true. But you don't have to be cemented by those either. Just like for yourself, how you're out there working out and. You know, you're saying the result, like your back feels better. You know, you feel a lot more, um, I mean, you feel the results health-wise. And actually how you see yourself, that's what you have to focus on. You know, you're not going to be right. like Buck. You're not going to be like T. You're not going to be like anybody else. I mean, you are your own individual, and that's the most important thing you have to work on is your self-image of how you see yourself. Right. Right, and you do, you can see it, you know, a lot of times, too, with, with women can be so catty, you know, with the comments or feeling some type of way. And like I always tell you, like even when people leave me nasty comments on YouTube, a lot of it is insecurity. I remember when I was doing my little fashion videos, I had somebody email me and basically tell me that they weren't filling my fashion videos because they thought I was a lot bigger than what I was. So basically you're comfortable with, with the impression that you think that I'm big and overweight. That makes you feel good about yourself. But once you see me standing, you can see my shape and see that I'm only 135 pounds. If that, now you feel some type of way. So I think as women, we have to encourage each other to want to be fit, to want to work out. You know, you see a lot of women who hate on Jennifer Hudson all the time and say she's too skinny, her head's too big, but she's healthy. I mean, that should be the main focus, regardless of her attitude, and even if it's gone to her head a little bit, she's still a lot healthier now than she was two, three years ago. And I'm happy for her weight loss and for her success. So I think a lot of times as women, we need to support each other because, I mean, it's insane. Like I had a woman who would comment on my video that I talked about with Rhonda, the lady who's, uh, who got fired for her hair comment, and she came on there just to tell me that I was fat. You know, she was like, nobody wants to see your fat ass, and she's going off. And I'm like, you know, um, what does this have to do with the topic of hair? And I just told her basically, you know, thank you. You know, it is what it is. But it, right. within this girl's picture, like, you know, you can see people's icon pictures. She looked like a watermelon. And it's like, you, you want to sit here and talk about somebody else, but you really don't look too thin from that icon picture I see either. You know, so a lot of times, you know, a lot of women have a lot of self-esteem issues. A lot of women like to throw a lot of shade and a lot of salt. Well, really all they have to do is get up, work out, and take care of themselves because if you know, um, if you're comfortable with your shape and you're comfortable with your body, then nobody can say anything to you. Like, I, it doesn't bother me because I know my size. I like my shape. You know, people want to assume that, I have breast implants and whatever else, that's fine. You know, I know my body and I'm cool with that. So what I would encourage people to do instead of hating on other folks and, and talking about other people's bodies, make sure your body's on point. Because I've seen comments where people have left her comments saying, oh, I don't like her butt, her butt is too big. But that's her natural shape. She can't help how she's naturally built, and her she has a nice shape. You know, so I think for the people who have so much to say about other people's bodies and their shapes, a lot of them need to take a look in the mirror. And Jamal well, asked me how tall I am. I'm 5'7". And with heels on, I'm like 5'11", almost 6 feet. I love my long, skinny, bony legs. They look like upside-down baseball bats. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say yeah, it. I, I, used be, well, I used to be so insecure about my skinny legs, like real tight. I used to be so insecure about my legs. But if I, as I've gotten older, I don't give a damn. Give me some heels. Shit, I don't care. I will walk my little bony legs up and down the runway. No shame here. I love my legs now. My my um my guy's daughter, her legs are bigger than mine, and she's like 11. I think all kids have bigger calves than me. I have, like, really, really skinny legs. But, you know, it took me a long time to be comfortable with my body type and, and my shape, and I am. You know, like, I, I don't care. People can make comments. People can be like, ooh, those, ain't, those shoes, you know, they look too big for your ankles. Your ankles are so skinny. That's fine. As long as you're satisfied with your ankles, because I'm satisfied with mine. But but you know what, T, it's like, again, a lot of people allow themselves to be willing slaves of public opinion. Just like how they talk about how your legs, or you have that chick talk about, say, your, your butt's this way, your breasts or whatever, and you look at these people and some look like an upside-down three-liter bottle or beer kegs or busted water heaters. 
I mean, just handle your business. I mean, it, it, everyone's built a certain way, either endomorph, ectomorph, or mesomorph. You figure out, as long as I'm healthy in my size, I'm cool. But actually, when you have those negative opinions out there, use that as, uh, as confirmation that you got their attention. They would be, I mean, if you, did, if you didn't matter, they wouldn't say anything to you. You know, they, they like I mean, like they like it when you give them a, a platform and a stage to like cut yourself and speak down, so <laughs> they get down to your level. So, right. you know, it, it, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, like when they call you out and say you you look like this or whatever, I say thank you for noticing. That's what pisses them off because oh, yeah. you didn't you didn't give them what they want. You know, so when you're walking down the run, I mean, uh, the runway, you can, you think to yourself, at least I'm not leaving potholes down there, or you know, I'm not. <laughs> <You're so stupid. laughs> I'm not taking down pillars or anything. I mean, hey, just <laughs> knock you know, another model the, down the runway. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, not the, I'm not the two-time Miss Ankles, you know, uh, champion. I mean, just you to think about. It. Like, you know what? You can help them out by giving them advice and look. Since you've noticed what I'm doing, I'll show you how to get legs like these or a midsection like this. You know, you don't have to look like a busted, you know, wedding cake that fell on top of itself. You you can improve yourself. So. Right, everybody can. There's no reason for anybody to not be able to. And, you know, like I said, it's not about having to spend a lot of money on gym memberships. You can watch Buffy's videos. You can do it from the comfort of your home. You can watch her on your computer and work out with her. And it's not just Buffy. It's a lot of other people. There's a lady named Lauren London. Um, I do a lot of her videos, too. She does standing abs, and I love her standing abs series. So I do that to keep my stomach tight. You know, I have two kids, and I love the fact that people do not believe I have two kids. You know, I don't want anybody to ever see me like, she look like she got my six, seven kids. The hell if I do, shit. <laughs> I love the fact that nobody thinks I have two kids until I open my mouth. You know, so I just I just try to keep myself in shape. It's not easy, and sometimes I want to just pick out and just do me, but nah. <laughs> I'd rather not do that. But there's a lot of people in the chat room making a lot of good points about working out and and things like that. So this was definitely a really cool show, and I'm once again I'm glad that she decided to come in. So it's been a few little things going on here, and I wanted to kind of bring it up. Um, there's been a lot of controversy going on about the whole inaugurational ball, um, all that drama with. Um, Lupe Fiasco, and now it's come out that Beyonce didn't really sing the Star Spangled Banner. Did you hear anything about this, Ronan? Yeah, I've been hearing about that off and on. Um, someone said they were talking about it on the, I think it's like the Today Show, where they was mocking her about her lip sync and the, uh, um, the Star Spangled Banner, um, about Lupe Fiasco getting put off the stage, and Cornell West getting pissed off about Gets, uh, Obama gets sworn about the uh, on Martin Luther King's Bible. I mean, there's there's always a whole bunch of uh, <laughs> drama stemming from this. Right. Me personally, I mean, if you're going to sing it, I, in some ways I understand like lip syncing, you know, the thing. But again, I mean, I, I'm kind of mixed on that situation right there. As far as Lupe Fiasco, he, you know, he exercises freedom Watch of speech. Watch what you say, bro. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's my baby. <laughs> Why should you say about Lupe? <laughs> I mean, no, I like, like, go ahead, say what you got to say. No, I, I, I like the fact that, you know, he, he stood up, stood for what he believed in and spoke his mind. Now, people might not like what he says, but there's some merit to what he says. So I respect him right. for that. You know, and I just put the video up on, on YouTube. Um, I just posted it. And my whole thing with Beyonce lip syncing, like, let, let's try to be real here. Everybody has heard Beyonce live for the most part. Beyonce um, can sing her ass off. I think Beyonce can sing. I think she has a beautiful voice. You know, I feel like when people use pre-recorded tracks, most people use them when they're dancing and when they're doing a lot of stuff. You know, I found it odd that she wanted to use one when she wasn't doing anything but looking pretty. But, again, I could understand her wanting to be on the more cautious side because she probably didn't want anything bad to happen, any technical issues, you know, things like that. So I can definitely understand why she chose to do it. But then it kind of looks bad because Chloe Clark's, Kelly Clarkson, excuse me, she sang her ass off. 
Kelly rocked it, and she sang live. So now people are looking like, okay, this is Kelly Clarkson, American Idol, and she done sang her ass off without a pre-recorded tape. You're supposed to be Queen Beyonce. What's up? So I think that's where some of the controversy is coming in as well. But, again, let's not act like Beyonce can't sing because she definitely can sing. Um Aside the whole Lupe Fiasco situation, y'all know that's my baby daddy in my head. I told y'all before, me and him have twin daughters. Uh, <laughs> I saw that one in the chat room. I was like, uh, okay. But anyway, I love Lupe. He's one of my favorite artists. He's very outspoken. I feel like it was some BS, whoever invited him to the inaugurational celebration. First of all, Lupe has been very open you know, very honest about how he feels about President Obama, about his policies. So why would somebody invite all the rappers out there? There's like 50 million to choose from. Why would you invite Lupe to an event like that? Like, that makes no sense to me. And so he's saying words I never said, and that's one of my favorite songs. That's what we're supposed to play tonight, but Blog Talk Radio is tripping and decided not to play my song. I guess Lupe must be banned for Blog Talk Radio because they did not start the song. But um, he, he went in on that song, and he makes so many good points. If you haven't heard that song, you need to listen to it in, in its whole entirety. But my whole situation, I guess the whole situation with Lupe is people were upset, the promoters were mad, because he sang or he performed the song for 30 minutes straight. So that's where the drama came in at. They told him after the third time, dude, you need to pick another song. Like, you done played this song three times already. And he just kept going and kept going and kept going. But that's Lupe for you. He's a rebel. Um, The song is called Words I Never Said, Thomas. So that's the song. So how do you feel about him singing it for 30 minutes straight? I I believe he was trying to make a point. I think he was trying to make his uh, – he was taking his rebellious stance on certain things. I know he's had uh, words about uh, many controversial things, even the president. So that's mm-hmm. why I believe that three times. I mean, he could have sang a legion of other songs, but he could. But I think that's why he made that choice to, like, you guys are not hearing me what I'm saying, so I'm going to say it again. And that probably pissed quite a few people off, which, of course, when you speak how you feel, go and do that. And that's why they right. off. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, it's so thing. crazy. It's like, you know, even the whole thing with Lupe, you know, with him being up there for 30 minutes uh, performing the same song over and over, I think that he did that to make a stance to, you know, get his point across. Because when you think about it, when was the last time anybody blogged about Lupe? As far as, like, the blogs and stuff. No one talks about him because he's not involved in a bunch of drama. He doesn't have baby mama drama. He doesn't have, you know, people going at him, except for the whole Chief Keith situation. So this is really the only way he can really get a buzz again. And he did it, and he got his buzz, and people are opening their eyes, and once again, people are questioning Obama's policies. So I don't disagree with the message that he sent across, but I just know if I pay my money, you don't sing more than one song. That's just my personal opinion. I like Lupe too much. If I want to listen to words I never said, I can hear repeat on my MP3 player. I'm going to need him to play his whole album. That's how long I'm in the stand. <laughs> <laughs> but now everybody in the chat room is talking about it. Here, here goes Rashani. She just started a whole new topic in the chat room. She says, does anybody notice how McDonald's foods don't taste the same as they used to, that she's saying that McDonald's foods taste really different now? And a lot of people are saying yes. <laughs> And I don't eat McDonald's like that. I mean, I rarely, if ever, go to McDonald's. But um, when I have gone, I've had their fries and stuff. They don't taste the same. I like Wendy's fries better if I have to eat some fries. Wendy's has natural fries. I don't know how natural they are, but they claim they're natural. But McDonald's food just, it, it's not the same. I don't know. How are the burgers? Because I haven't had a burger in years. Uh. I really eat McDonald's sparingly. I don't eat it until unless I have to. If anything, I'll eat the breakfast. Boy, and I'm used I'm used to like the uh egg McMuffins. That's just one of my weaknesses. But as far as like things with the McRib and the fries now, uh, I can't do it. I just can't. It's just my my ta- my palate is a little different now, so it kind of turns me off. I'm more of a Chick Fil A type dude, so that's what I eat. <laughs> <laughs> the McRib just sounds nasty. To make real, yeah. Ugh. yeah. I mean, it's it's actually it's no different than what we had as a cafeteria. That same shit. It's like the same thing. No bueno. I'm cool. Not really if ever. Even their salads. You know what? Real talk. Even their salads don't taste right like they used to. They don't be as fresh. 
I remember I had to call up to one of the McDonald's out here because my guy went and got me a salad. It was like the Southwest salad, hold the chicken. And yeah. so, you know, I'm eating it, and it's, like, wilted. You can tell nobody goes to McDonald's to order salads because, obviously, the salad had been in the in the refrigerator for, like, two, three days because it was wilted. There were brown spots. It was soggy. So I caught up, and I was like, you know what? This isn't cool. I need my money back. I need a new salad. So they ended up sending me a coupon for, like, a different salad. But, yeah, I'll say that a lot of this stuff doesn't really taste good. I don't, I don't fool with too much fast food anyways. Um, somebody's saying I'm bona fide loving this and telling them that Chipotle is good. And Chipotle is good, and they do have, like, a really nice vegetarian menu where you can just get, you know, a burrito with, like, rice and beans. So I like that. But even when I did used to eat meat and I had Chipotle, um, from what I'm hearing, their chicken and their beef are raised on their own farm, so there's no hormones or GMOs pumped into their food. So Chipotle is a really good, healthy choice. But them damn burritos are big. They're bigger than my forearms. <laughs> and somebody in the chat room, um, Big Bib- Nerd brought up Fat Hole Burger. Yeah, I remember that video I did about that, about the big lady who had opened up the burger, joined down in Texas. Did you ever eat there? Because you're in Texas. Uh, no, I haven't ate there. I have no desire. I heard to she eat shut that. down. Huh? You know that she shut down. She's no longer there. <laughs> well, that, that's good because I have no, I mean, just anything with a name that says Fat Hole Burger, I'm cool. Uh, it just doesn't sound promising. It just don't. <laughs> she made her money, though. You know, people was hating on her, but like I said, she could have been doing a lot worse. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know, Fat Hole Burger with cheese, and it was spelled C-H-Z. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the funniest thing And I mean a lot of people came They went, they ate But for some reason she couldn't keep her restaurant up Because somebody had left a comment a while ago on the video Talking about they went down Did it go to Fat Hole Burger and it was shut down <laughs> uh, well, That's the same like, Remember um, Flavor Flay's Chicken Shack When he had opened up that Chicken Shack restaurant Down in uh, Iowa And that yeah. closed out six months later but, I mean, again, it's like when you have, like, fly-by-night franchises like that, I personally believe it is a whole lot better to replicate that stuff at home a lot more healthier than – and then plus you save a lot more money that way versus, like, paying 6 7 $10 for the same thing you can make in, in abundance at home. Honestly. Right. Uh, you know, you don't have to fry it or do the things they do because they do that for mass qualities. You can just – take your time, bake certain things, like you can cook, um, you know, the same, you basically put, to make the same thing and be a lot better for it than what you get from the restaurant. So that's what I'm putting. All right. I mean, they chose the stuff that people are willing to eat. Uh, Thomas is talking about, has anybody ever heard of the triple bypass burger? And then oh. Bonafide said, somebody said, stop watching the boondocks. But, uh, no, there is a real burger like that, though. Um, there is a burger... I don't know. It's a big, nasty, sloppy burger, and I think it's called the the heart attack burger. And yeah, it's just big. It has cheese, and then if you eat it all, you get it for free. I mean, there's just all types of stuff. Then you had like deep fried um, butter, deep yeah. fried Kool Aid balls, deep fried Snickers. So people will but find it, anything to eat as long as you can put it in a batter and fry it. It's going to be a southern treat. Well, yeah, and, and, like, especially the there's going to be an event, I think, uh, next month called the Rodeo. You have a bunch of it's, – it's like a season of gluttony where you're having people having, like, deer legs. Um, just all oh, deer leg? Ain't it turkey leg? Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's big. It's like it took me about – I had a, I had my dogs help me finish that food, and they took about <laughs> half a day to eat that. And nowadays you, like, you have things like Fud Ruckers where you're having pound burgers. Um, or they have, or they have them con- contests where if you finish like a two or three pound burger, you can like win some kind of prize. But really, that stuff fucks you up. Yeah, I mean that's a heart attack waiting to happen. Truth be told. Yeah. yeah, you're just paying. You're pretty much paying people to kill you. It's contract killing. Right. right there. There's just no point in it. Right. It's crazy. I mean, it's just, I, I won't, I can't mess with that. And um, Bill Miller is saying that he wants me to do a Jalof Rice tutorial, show how to make some Nigerian food. 
I should do that. You know, me and my mom cook all the time, and that's something I do. I mean, I do eat a lot of Nigerian food, too, so that helps. I love jollof rice. Me and my mom, my sister, we had made moin moin, like, not too long ago, and you guys I don't know what that is. It's like a it's like a bean, and, like, you boil it. It's really, really good. It's hard to explain. You just have to taste it. But um, I eat a lot of fufu and, you know, just different soups, egusi soup, things like that. My kids love Nigerian food, plantains, dodo, everything. We eat it all. <laughs> Maybe I should make some tutorials on how to make Nigerian food. That would be cool. Other folks are shouting out their food. People talking about Cajun food and dirty rice. Dirty rice is good. I like that, too. Oh, dirty rice. Y'all are making eat. me hungry. You know what I had today? A salad. Thank you for talking about dirty rice and jollof rice. I appreciate you. Somebody else is talking about Jamaican food. Other folks are talking about Korean food. Thank you. Konnichiwa. <laughs> When I get off this call, I'm about to go make me something to eat. Uh, oh, my goodness. Yeah, and um, Lacey's talking about curried goat. I haven't had curried goat in years, but I remember I used to love um, jerk chicken, the beef patties, and my mom makes a really nice um, beef patty. Like we do it it's like a Nigerian-style beef patty. It's really, really good. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on rabbit food, y'all, right now. Just sell it for me. Well, I have to get my weight uh, back down. This is what I want to ask you, T, like, because uh, mm-hmm. I'm just getting it in bits and, bits and pieces. Like, yesterday, there was a shooting here in Houston uh, as far as, like, a Lone Star College. And personally, I think it was, like, a, a nigga moment that went public. And it was between, like, a, a black dude so far, and I think there's another suspect, as from what I'm reading here, um, and a Latino man, and... Fire shots were fired. Somebody, like, was suffering a heart attack. And I know this is going to be another case for the uh, gun law or gun nuts right here. I want to know what your Mm. thoughts are with these moments uh, taking place. Now, I only heard a little bit about the shooting. I can't say that I I heard a lot about it. I only heard a little bit about it. You know, but it just it's odd that all these shootings and killings are just happening back to back to back. You know, and I mean it is. It's it's just gonna give them more of an excuse to pull the Second Amendment and a lot of the gun lobbyists, um and it's just gonna cause more of a of a divide and a friction between the people who are for the guns, who are pro guns and the people who are against them. You know, so and I also think if the media would start reporting on a lot of these stories that you'd have a lot of copycats not copying. You know, it's like when you report on every little story, like, I mean, I understand, like, the massacre, like, the mass shootings, because those are important. But and not to, you know, sit here and um, disrespect anybody who may lie. Somebody, did anybody die in Texas during that college shooting that happened? Yeah, it was, like, uh, in Houston, Texas. It was uh, a Lone Star College. I don't think it's, like, it was, it, How many people died? Uh, that didn't say anything about anybody dying yet. It's just, like, the worst thing was as far as a heart attack that someone suffered, and they're... Right, they're, but then it's like you're they're talking like, I'm not saying it shouldn't make news, but it shouldn't be national news. I mean, right. you have people who get shot and killed every day, so when you try and blow this up, I mean, the way they initially put it out there, you would have thought like 15 people died on campus. But now right. it's starting to come out that nobody really died and somebody just had a heart attack. So I think if they would start reporting on, like, you know, all these so-called mass shootings, you know, you'd have a lot of people not wanting to copycat it because I think that's where a lot of this is, is a lot of copycats. Um, and sometimes it could be, you know, inside jobs where people are doing that to make a point um, if they're pro-Second Amendment or against the Second Amendment. You know, it's, it's just going to depend. But, I mean, I just think the whole situation is unfortunate. And once again, not, oh, let me ask you this. Did you hear Louis Farrakhan call out Obama? Did you get a uh, chance to see that? No, I didn't, but I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, what, did he, what did he say exactly? Uh, it was really good, you guys, in the chat room, if you guys didn't um, hear what Minister Louis Farrakhan said. And I listen to Minister Louis Farrakhan a lot. You know, I, I like him. I like a lot of the stuff that he has to say. He's not racist. If you ever really sit and listen to what he says, he, he speaks a lot of truth to power. Um, I'm not saying I agree with everything that he says, but a lot of the stuff that he does say I, I do tend to agree with him on. But um, basically he was interviewed the other day, and he sent out a plea to Obama. And he basically said that he wants Obama to come and speak 
to the Inglewood neighborhood of Chicago and just to Chicago in general about the killings because, once again, we've been talking about it on the show for the past few weeks. It hasn't even been 30 days and we've had so many people lose their lives, especially young people dying in Chicago, and no one is addressing the situation. Like you said, now all of a sudden national attention is down there in, in Houston with this little college shooting, but you have over 30 people dead, and it hasn't even been 30 days in Chicago, and there's no national attention there. You know, but unfortunately a lot of these young dudes, they're fulfilling the plan. You know, they want us to kill ourselves and hurt ourselves and not care about ourselves and look at each other as the enemy instead of looking at each other as family. So they're playing right into that plan, unfortunately. But um, I agree with what Louis Farrakhan said. I do think that Obama should speak on it. Now, with that being said, do I think that Obama is a messiah? Do I think he's going to be able to wave a magic wand and, you know, all of a sudden the killings and the shootings are going to stop? No, I don't. But I just think that if he just acknowledges it, I think, you know, it would just make people see him one in a better light. But you never know. It might just reach one of these little knuckleheads who are out here just shooting up people on the south side of Chicago. It might just reach one or two of them to put their hands, you know, to put their guns down and to think before they shoot. You know, so I think he should speak on it personally. I mean, if he can speak on Sandy Hook and everything else, there's no reason why he shouldn't speak on anything dealing with it um, just for the fact that, he was a community organizer. He right. grew up, I mean, after, you know, once he, before he got into politics, he grew up on the, not grew up, but, you know, he was living on the south side of Chicago. He was out there fighting for the people. So this is something that he's done. So I definitely agree when people say that he should say something. But, again, you know, it's not all on Obama. It's not Obama's job to take care of the entire black community because he is America's president. You know, we also have to take blame. We also need our leaders to step up. We also need more parents being involved, more community organi- organizers and things like that. But um, I think Louis Farrakhan definitely makes a good point. What do you think about it? Do you think he should speak on it or no? I, I definitely think he should say something um to a degree, because again, that's where he started from doing community service uh, in the trenches that most politicians or most individuals don't do as a community organizer. However, he is not the, the soul and face of what should be said. It's, it's us that, that are actually lazy when it comes to situations like this. We can police ourselves and each other, but for some reason we like to outsource that responsibility to others. Like everyone thinks Obama's supposed to do everything. He's supposed to pay our bills and take care of our credit and babysit our kids when really he's got other things to do. We should be able to, like, get up and support each other. Like, again, like things about, like, neighborhood watch, you know, um, things like create community things like, you know, YMCA's and things like that to keep kids preoccupied instead of involving gangs and all kind of backwards nonsense, you know. And, again, it's like everyone is, like, figuring, well, we need a new leader instead of being leaders in our own right. You know, and it's, I mean, it's sad. Plus, most people are lazy when it comes to the, the media. They have this opportunity to pick and choose which tragedy is worth uh, reporting on and which other ones are dismissed. Like, 30 bodies have been created. I mean, as far as we know, 30 bodies have been made, not even 30 days to the new year, and no one says shit about it. But then you have a situation that was staged, like Sandy Hook, and everyone is talking about it, like this is a tragedy. I have a problem with that because losing one life, especially with kids and Derry on Albert, that's a tragedy, period. That's a that's a cause for concern. So I think, that, I think they're doing it like um, as far as divide and conquer where people pick who's worth, whose lives are worth saving and others who are just, you know, acceptable casualties. Right. Yep. That's that's very very true. You know, and like somebody saying in the chat, when Bonaparte is saying that, you know, the fathers in the gang, the sons in the gang, a lot of it is generational. You know, a lot of people do things because out of habit, because that's what they know. They saw their father gang banging, they saw their uncles gang banging, so it's only natural that they decide to join a gang, or you know, they feel like the gang is their family. So I think you know. We have to be out here trying to help each other out, help out kids, be mentors, you know, especially if you know, like, there's, like, a kid in the neighborhood who's just, you know, everybody knows a little badass that just runs around the neighborhood, can't tell them nothing. Sometimes you just got to pull that child to the side and talk to them, you know, and try and explain things to him and be there for them because they may not have anybody at home teaching them right from wrong. 
So I think we can all be leaders in our own right, you know, by taking another young person underneath our wing and helping them to show them something, you know. So, I mean, the situation is not going to be erased or going to be, you know, over in in like a, you know, in a week's time or even this year. But I think that people definitely need to get the ball rolling. I definitely think that Obama needs to speak on it, you know, and um I just think, like, that just the senseless violence is just getting ridiculous. It's just out of hand. You just have a lot of people out here who just, they don't care anymore, and it's unfortunate. But, again, it comes back to, you know, low self-esteem and low self-worth because when you love yourself and you care about yourself and you care about your body and your health and your well-being, you know, you're, you're, you're going to hold the, the next person with that same esteem. You know, I love myself, so I'm not going to put myself in particular situations. I love my family. I love my friends. So I don't want to see them in that particular situation either. But, you know, you have a lot of us who care around a lot of self-hate, you know, a lot of animosity towards each other, and then we end up perpetuating a lot of that, you know, ignorance and violence onto other people. So it's really, really unfortunate at the end of the day. Yeah. I, I think personally to add on to that, of course, Obama mm-hmm. would say something about it, especially when it's from, you know, where he was – no, I mean, ra- pretty much raised up in. But where are the community leaders? Where are the mayors? Where are the, uh, you know, individuals in that area speaking? You don't hear anything. It's like that uh, that audible silence in there. It's like, well, it's Obama's deal. When that's your district, that's your jurisdiction, you're supposed to be responsible for that. You know, responsible for that. Um, right. A lot of people like to put out, like, well, the fathers are not in the home. But what about the mothers that are still there? I mean, again, it's like, you know, in the absence of one part of the parental puzzle, there's the other vital part. What are they feeding and instilling their children in the meantime while that person is absent? You know, there's a whole lot of outsourcing of blame, but there's so many people who need to take accountability for what we're seeing and doing out here because gangs should not be able to thrive like they've been thriving as of late. Right. If the parents are involved, and that's what Bill O'Neill is saying in the chat room, he's saying that he... um or it might be a she, I apologize, is saying I think that people need to take personal responsibility. I mean, I grew up in Harlem, and I'm in graduate school, and um, I believe it's mostly the parenting, in my opinion. And Danica says she's a task force all this time because Danica is a, a good student, and, you know, she tries to do the right thing, and sometimes students at her school make fun of her and treat her like she's just, you know, this nerd. And she's just doing what she's supposed to do, you know. So I definitely agree that it definitely starts in the home, and a lot of it does have to do with the parenting. So we have about 20 minutes left, I believe. Let me see. This time just goes by so quick, and I just enjoy it with you guys. I'm like, I really enjoy Wednesdays. <laughs> um, so one thing that we I did want to touch on is the whole, because Brian had brought this up on Facebook, and I don't think he's here tonight, but um, the whole situation with Cornell West, him saying that Obama does not deserve to be sworn in with MLK's Bible. Danica, I want you to write something in the chat room, because I know Danica got something to say. <laughs> I want her to write something in the chat room. What do you think about Cornell West saying that Obama does not deserve to be sworn in to MLK's Bible? Hey, Danica, I'm on his side. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I knew Danica would be on the side. He said she's saying that Cornell West speaks the truth. Um, went in. If you guys did not see the video, he definitely went in. Go ahead. What do you think about the situation? Did you get a chance to watch the video? Um, I just started before the show, and I believe he is right so far. Um, because again, it seems like. Once a person gets in the office, things tend to change. And um, as far as, like, I think it's symbolic as to I understand why he's uh, saying what he's saying because, again, it's like uh, most people have not seen anything, especially in the black community, have not seen anything as far as uh, issues being addressed and whatnot. At least on that part, there should be mention about things that improve that community, and I haven't seen it among others. So I get where he's standing coming from. But um again, um in some I I'm kinda in the mid- middle of it, trying to like really see it for what it is. Because uh it, it is symbolic. I know it can be insulting. I can be, but you know, again it's like the responsibility still falls on us. It's not just, you know, what he does. And I'm not taking up for President Obama by any means. I mean he's he's old man and everything like that, but still 
uh, we still have a measure of responsibility as what should be done for ourselves and each other. Him being sworn in, that's, it could be on a gay Bible, or it could be on anything, you know. But still, in some way, I'll say like 20%, I say is slightly a little petty, but 80%, I get where it's coming from. That's how I feel about it. Right. You know, some people are just saying that he's just mad that he wasn't invited to the inaugurational, you know, thing, the whole inaugurational ball, and that's why he's speaking out. But I think it's deeper than that. You know, come on, we're all grown here. You know, sometimes he says certain things that's come off as kind of bitter at times, and I do find it weird that it seems that Obama and Michelle are more closer with Jay-Z and Beyonce than any other, you know, than any of anybody else, you know, so why are they hanging so tough with this rapper and his singing wife, you know, I find that comical, but again, it is what it is, but that's what some people are saying, that he's upset, so I want to quote something that he said here, okay. um, let me see here, he says, Brother Martin Luther King Jr., what you say about the new Jim Crow, what, hold on, what would you say about the prison industrial complex, what would you say about the invisibility of so many of our prisoners, so many of our incarcerated, especially when 62% of them are there for soft drugs, and not one executive of a Wall Street bank has gone to jail. Not one. Martin doesn't like that. Um, then he's also saying, what would you say, what would Martin say about the wiretapping, the torture under the Bush administration, and then what would he say about the drones uh, on our precious brothers and sisters in Pakistan, Somalia, and Yemen? These are all war crimes, and just like the war crimes in Vietnam that Martin Luther King spoke against, um, that's why he, that's one of the main reasons why he feels like Obama had no business putting his hand on Martin Luther King's Bible. You know, so I can definitely see his points there, you know, mm -hmm. but again, like I always say, Obama and his drone strikes, I don't agree with those policies. I don't I don't feel like it's okay to send a drone in to kill a whole community just to get one terrorist. That's BS. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like yeah. if a criminal in my neighborhood does something wrong and the police decide to come into my community where I live and shoot everyone here just to get one criminal, there will be yeah. outrage. You know, so I don't agree with that at all. I don't think that, you know, that it should be okay to kill lots of lives just to get one person. But, um, again, can you just blame Obama, though? Is it fair to just say this is Obama's fault? Because, again, Obama's a puppet. There's, there's people behind him pulling the strings. So I think that's what people need to realize before we just throw all the blame on Obama and say that he's a warmonger and he's a you know horrible president, he's a horrible person. Well, what about the, the bankers and the people behind him who are funding him? You know, because yeah. you've got to take a lot of that into consideration as well. Uh, you're definitely right about that because a lot of people get stuck with television. They just pick one individual and think, they're running the show. No, there are people behind the spotlight, which I tell people there's much more power behind it than on it. And there's other people like the banks uh, and other entities that most people tend to ignore, which is intended to be that way. You know, why do they push for certain policies? Why do they allow certain things to happen? Why are certain transactions taking place on the, well, actually in front of people and they don't pay attention to it? So a lot of times it's our fault for not seeing things for what they really are, you know, just pretty much putting on, well, Obama's, old fault. I mean, Obama's the cause of this. You know, you have to find out who else is, you know, pulling his strength because he's in a right. cabinet. He's just a face, but you got to see who's behind that face too. Right. And um, Camera Lady brought up a really good point in the chat room. She's saying that, honestly, nobody would know what Martin Luther King would think of us today. It's all speculative, you know, which is very true. But I watched that Boondocks episode, and he said it flat out. <laughs> That's why he's going to Canada. <laughs> MLK would be so disappointed, and I'm not trying to make a joke out of it because I highly respect him, but that Boondocks episode, ooh, we. I mean, when you think about it, like if he was to see all this stuff that we're doing now, how we're killing each other, how we can't stand each other, how half of us don't even want to be black, you know, we want to be anything but black, you know, it's just, he probably would go to Canada. He'd be like, I'm cool. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> you know, but it's, it's, he's probably turning his gray, him and Malcolm X. You know, and I think about that sometimes with how bad we've fallen off as a society, and it's not just, you know, the black community, it's just like the morals have fallen off in general. You know, what I find so funny is um, the fact that Rush Limbaugh, I don't know if you heard this, 
he started a petition as well to help put the Shotty Low show back on the air. So, you know, he's throwing jazz at Shotty Low all the while trying to defend his show. And he's like, yeah, he's a drug dealer. Yeah, he has a bunch of baby mamas. But so what? His show should be on the air. So it makes you think of, you know, what are his intentions for him wanting that show to be on the air and to be seen by a lot of people? Because all he's going to do is use that show as an excuse to make it look like, the, you know, this is a typical black family. They're all on welfare, this, this, and that. So I just found it really funny that Rush Limbaugh is now involved with the whole Shotty Lowe situation. You know, did you hear anything about that? Um. I'm just not hearing about that, but really, it doesn't surprise me because not only do they need material to support these stereotypes, which for some reason people of color love to, I mean, add validity to, but again, that is how a lot of us are perceived um, inside and outside the United States as a whole. They believe that, you know, we are the shorty lords out there, that we are the uh, bad girls club, all these negative images. They need that because any right. positive image, any positive image, image out there, they have very serious problems um, accepting that. Anything like the Cosby Show, even we don't accept positive images in ourselves. So that's why he's pushing for that too. Because again, like he can get on his radio show and look at all these Negroes acting stupid, you know, acting ratchet. You know, that's what they are. That's what they do. And black folks, especially. They're the most they're, they're the, the serious culprits because they figure like just like you if you talk uh, proper they say that you're acting white or something different or you're acting something different so a lot of times to define your blackness it has to be something ignorant it has to be something backwards or stereotypical in order to you know have your ghetto pass or whatever so I I, I see why he he's supporting it but you have to right. figure out. What is their intent and their support? Right. Exactly, you know, and it's it's crazy. And then they were saying that he got arrested for non paint for not paying child support recently. And then I heard it was just a rumor. So I don't know. First, I don't care. I'm over the whole show situation. You know, if the show ends up airing, it is what it is. Like I already said in my video, I have no plans on watching it. So if you want to watch it, feel free to watch it. That's, you know, the great part of being in America. You can do what you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but the whole situation is just it, it's crazy. You know, it just seems like a lot of people don't have, you know, morals and respect anymore, and like they were saying in the chat room, they're bringing up the Martin Luther King fire, and there are some new ones this year, if you guys haven't seen them, you guys can just Google them, you know, when people use a Martin Luther King picture, you know, photoshopped on some, you know, the rapper's body with a bunch of chains and a leather coat, and, you know, this, this is really sad, you know, just yeah. shows, and my son, he even told me the other day, because he was born on Martin Luther King's birthday, so he said they were talking about it in class, they were talking about the civil rights movement, and he was getting so irritated because me and my son, we, we talked about a lot of stuff. He said he was getting so irritated in class because of how, almost like, you know, how dumb the kids were acting. Like they just had no idea who my Luther King was. And he said one of the girls in the classroom asked the teacher and was like, so was my Luther King, you know, so he fought to free the slaves? And my son was like, are you serious? Why would you think that he was like, the civil rights happened in the 60s, slavery happened hundreds of years ago. Why would you think that Martin Luther King was around during slavery days? But this was an honest question that this little girl had. So it just goes to tell you that we're not educating our children. We're not letting our children know about, you know, the great leaders like Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, you know, Marcus Garvey and things like that. So it, it's sad. But she was dead. So she thought Martin Luther King freed the slaves. I wanted to meet her after school. You know, just like to explain to her, but you're not in my place. But it was just like he he couldn't believe it. He was like he could not believe that that was one of her questions. And the teacher was just looking like, are you serious? And then, you know, they had to break it down to her like, no, he was not around during slavery days. This was in the 60s when black people, you know, they had separate but equal and things like that. But, you know, it, it's crazy, but a lot of the kids growing up nowadays, they don't know anything about Martin Luther King, and I blame the parents. The parents are not teaching them. You know, I can't get mad at the little girl. Obviously, her parents have not taught her anything about the civil rights and, you know, um, the black power movement and things like that. So it's unfortunate, but we definitely have to do better. We well, have we to do, do better. And, we're, and I say the generations that uh, were before her have failed her. and did deal with a serious disservice because they have not – I mean, if you had Martin Luther King, Emmett Till, Marcus, uh, I mean, Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, um, 
Mecca Evers, a legion of people who have fought, died, and and stood against a lot of the atrocities at that time to get to this point. And they come here on modern day. It, it's pretty much the era of the hood booger. And they would look around. It's like, I fought and died for this. They'd be outright disappointed, and I would understand because they have people have not learned from their history. They did not support themselves and each other. Any opportunity to progress themselves forward as a culture, as individuals, all have been sacrificed to get on world star hip hop or the ghetto gaggers or any kind of means to get some little fifteen seconds of fame. And they throwing all that all those efforts away for nothing. Right. Oh yeah, a lot of them are making some really good points in the chat room. Um Blue is saying that she's thankful for her boss when they tutor kids and make them read the letter to um, Birmingham. Um, Camera Lady is saying that so many things in history are getting omitted and misrepresented in schools. Danica is saying that she works at a daycare, and uh, she must say that the parent, that these are the parents of the today's youth. She's really sad for the youth, so it means like a lot of the parents are just off the dang on chain. So it's it's really crazy out here, you know, but, again, we just have to step up and try and help those who may not be educated. And, you know, like I told my son, you know, I'm not necessarily getting mad at her. Obviously, her parents haven't taught her. So what you need to do, being that you know about Martin Luther King and you understand, you know, everything that in, that embodies him, you need to teach her that. You need to let her know that. You know, because it's easy to get frustrated and throw your hands up at a child, but a child only knows what they're taught, point blank. Yeah. And you're right. And there's an abundance of wealth beyond the allowed name that people say in history. We, our history started long before the slave ships hit the shores and went on the slave trade route. It's, it's much deeper than what people right. are allowed, allow themselves to see. And you have to, I mean, you have to really research on where you come from and where you've been. You never know who you might have been a descendant of. Some people might be a descendant of the, the most uh, prolific uh, historians or uh, history makers that they're really unaware about. All people know is Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, and a few others, or Rosa Parks. But well, that's just not right. the tip of the iceberg. Now, Thomas is saying a, a comment in the chat room that I get a lot from kids, and he's saying that he's hurt because he's in this part of this generation, the generation that we're always talking about. Sandy's saying that Generation Z is probably the worst generation. And what I want you guys to take away from this, because I always get that, and I always get a lot of kids who get upset like, T, you know, you're dissing our generation. I'm one. I'm never one to diss anybody's generation, because our generation, Generation X, we were kind of off the chain, too. So it's not about that. What I don't want you to feel bad because you're part of this generation. You have to find ways to make a difference in your generation. You have to be that kid that says, you know what, okay, maybe so many people in my generation are kind of screwed up or, you know, they, they would rather admire little Wayne and Beyonce as opposed to a Martin Luther King and a Rosa Parks, but I'm going to be that kid that's different. I'm going to be that kid that steps out the box. I'm going to be that kid that helps, you know, teach other kids who may just not know about certain things, help encourage them and teach them more. So I don't think you should ever be ashamed of your generation because you can't help what year you were born. You can't help what generation you were born into. And trust me, the same way that we, Generation X, kind of look down at Generation Z is the same way that our parents' generation looked down on us, you know, as 80s and 90s kids. You know, we were spoiled and we were losers and all we did was watch Stay by the Bell. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so yeah. we we got the same crazy comments as well, especially when gangster hip hop hit the scene. But um, never be ashamed of your generation. All you can do is empower yourself, like somebody saying in the, in the in the chat room, camera lady saying, and take your power back. You know, and be one of those few in that generation to break the cycle. And Bonafide is saying that it's very hard. How do you break the cycle? You can break it by stepping out the norm. You know, it's not you're not going to change the world. You know, me doing this radio show is not going to change the world. But what you can do is do things, you know, be an example to yourself. As long as you're out here doing the right thing, somebody else may see that and that may help wake them up and then in return they start doing the right thing. So sometimes you have to be an example for yourself. You can make change by just doing small things. It's not necessarily going out there and picketing and, and things like that, but just, you know, just trying to do the right thing. You know, if you know that selling drugs is not the right thing to do, well, don't sell dope. You know what I'm saying? 
But if you're a dope boy, then you can't get mad at the at the situation that you end up facing further on in the future. We're just trying to show that, you know what, well, we're more than dope boys. We're more than, you know, video models and video fixings. Just like with Buffy, a lot of people have seen her and thought she was nothing but a butt. She was nothing but a video vixen. And this lady has turned her that whole persona, and she changed it into something totally different. You know, now she's turned it into something where she's a fitness um person, she's a fitness promoter, she has her own website, she's bringing in her own income in a positive way. So we just need to show people there's other hustles out here besides being focused on just, you know, on just our beauty and being focused on material goods. So a lot of these young boys are going to prison because they're trying to floss for women. They're trying to floss for young girls. You know, and it's not about the rims, it's not about the big cars. So you need to be securing yourself and realize that it's not about that. And that's how you can change a break the cycle by stepping outside the box. Stepping outside the norm. And, and using we have Buffy's three minutes example. left. <laughs> yeah, well, I was saying, like, and using Buffy's example and yours, uh, mine is too, it's like, again, it's all about you can change, you have the power to change perception of how people view you, how people interact with you just by what you do on a regular basis. If you started real bad or questionable, it's all about your plan and direction, you know, and not straying from it, you know, but. Again, you have to learn how to be your yourself, accept yourself, and learn how to uh, use whatever gifts you've been born with or given, and maximize them to make a difference in the world. Other than that, you know, um, you know, you just find the people that you can connect with and expand on that. Uh, now, I mean, sitting around complaining is just not going to help it. Right. You definitely have to get around like-minded people. You know, that's what Danica is saying in the chat room, that she's definitely like that, and, she, you know, she has a very different thought pattern. And that's why I like Danica. That's my little daughter right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's still young. But, um, you know, because she doesn't think like a typical 17-year-old. You know, she does her research. One day she was in the chat room breaking down the NDAA. So you definitely have to get people around you who are like-minded, and you can start right here in the chat room. You know, everybody in here can exchange Facebooks and, you know, meet up on my fan page and things like that, and that's what I do what I do, just so, you know, people have ways to meet other like-minded people. And that's what we want to promote because everybody's not on that nonsense. A lot of us out here working, working hard, and trying to do the right thing and take care of our kids. Nobody is perfect. We're all going to make mistakes. You know what I'm saying? But, again, it's all about learning from the mistakes and bettering yourself and then trying to better the next person so that way they can better themselves as well. Yes, Danica is 17. That girl's in high school. And she would yeah. drop some knowledge on you in the chat room. <laughs> right. and, and that's what's up. Especially with you and everybody else, you were not meant to fit in. You just sit there and make your way. That's just how it's meant. Right, right. And we're down to about 90 seconds. 60 seconds, my bad. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh, Bill, he's about to go get his Mary J. Blige chicken wrap after the show. Oh so you just going to go to Burger King after all that health and fitness, really? You just going to go spend your money at Burger King instead of getting a salad? <laughs> <laughs> Crispy chicken, fresh no. lettuce, three no. cheeses. Don't get me started. I know that's the song. <laughs> I keep telling you, Mary J. Blige should have made a single of that song, okay? I want to buy it because I love that song. <laughs> Who wants the chicken? I want the song. I know the song. Let me sing it for you. Crispy chicken, <laughs> fresh lettuce. <laughs> now everybody's rapping the lyrics in the chat. <laughs> Y'all wrong as hell. <laughs> Oh, man, I will not be giving me a chicken wrap. I'll probably just go give you some more salad. I'm hungry. But anyway, thank you guys so much for coming through. We're down to three seconds. Talk to you guys later. Deuces. Peace.